Hey guys, let's get more news about SAN Francisco 49ers, but first don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. The player the 49ers should draft in round 1. The 49ers have a tremendous opportunity. They have a first-round pick for the first time in three years, they need an offensive tackle and the upcoming draft is absolutely loaded at that position. If they stay put at pick number 31, they should be able to draft an offensive tackle who's better right now than Colton McKivitz and potentially can replace Trent Williams when he retires. The 49ers also could draft a defensive lineman, which they've done frequently in round one since Kyle Shanahan became the head coach. But can they really find a D-lineman at pick number 31 who's better right now than Leonard Floyd, Malik Collins, or Javon Hargrave? Doubtful. Which means any D-lineman the 49ers take in round one probably would be a backup for the foreseeable future. Why draft a backup defensive lineman in round one when they can draft a player who can start immediately at right tackle and move over to left tackle in a few years? The 49ers have to start preparing for life without Trent Williams. He'll be 36 in July, and he misses a few games every season. If he were to miss half a season with an injury, the 49ers would be in big trouble. That's why they should draft Tyler Guyton with pick number 31. Like Williams, Guyton played college football at Oklahoma and has the athleticism to play right tackle or left tackle. Assuming the 49ers keep making deep runs into the playoffs, they won't have another opportunity to draft an offensive tackle as talented as Guyton for quite some time. This is an opportunity they can't pass up. Will Patrick Taylor Jr. make the 49ers' 53-man roster? You should probably get to know Patrick Taylor Jr. The 49ers signed him recently to add depth to their running back room. Taylor Jr. will be 26 at the end of April, and he spent the first three seasons of his career on the Packers. Last season, he played 226 snaps, which is more than any 49ers backup running back played last season. He also caught 11 passes. Taylor Jr. is different than the 49ers' other backup running backs Elijah Mitchell and Jordan Mason. Those two don't contribute much to the passing game. The 49ers acquired them when they thought Trey Lance was going to be their starting quarterback and they would be running the zone red for the foreseeable future. Now Lance is gone and Brock Purdy is the starting quarterback, and the 49ers don't run the zone red. Instead, Purdy throws passes to his starting running back, Christian McCaffrey, the best check-down option in the NFL. When McCaffrey leaves the game, neither Mitchell nor Mason can run the routes or catch the passes that McCaffrey does, so the offense has to change. Enter Patrick Taylor Jr. He's no Christian McCaffrey, but he can run routes and catch passes, which means Kyle Shanahan won't have to change the offense when he's in the game and McCaffrey is taking a breather. Don't be surprised if Taylor Jr. makes the 53-man roster and the 49ers draft a pass-catching running back in a few weeks as well. Their offense is evolving with Purdy. Mitchell and Mason could get phased out. The San Francisco 49ers announced they have signed T.E. Eric Saubert and R.B. Patrick Taylor Jr. to one-year deals. Saubert, 6-5, 248, was originally drafted by the Atlanta Falcons in the fifth round, 174th overall, of the 2017 NFL Draft. Throughout his seven-year NFL career with the Falcons, 2017-18, Chicago Bears, 2019, Jacksonville Jaguars, 2020, Denver Broncos, 2021-22, Dallas Cowboys, 2023, and Houston Texans, 2023, he has appeared in 84 games, 16 starts, and registered 36 receptions for 292 yards and two touchdowns. In 2023, Saubert appeared in 10 games, one start, with the Cowboys and Texans and finished with three receptions for 12 yards. A 29-year-old native of Chicago, Illinois, Saubert attended Drake University, 2012-16, where he appeared in 22 games and totaled 191 receptions for 2,253 yards and 21 touchdowns. 
As a senior in 2016, he earned AP Second Team FCS All-American honors. Taylor Jr., 6-2, 217, originally entered the NFL after signing with the Green Bay Packers as an undrafted free agent on April 29, 2020. Throughout his three-year NFL career with the Packers, 2020-23, he has appeared in 34 games and registered 65 carries for 261 yards, 4.0 average, and one touchdown on the ground to go along with 14 receptions for 69 yards through the air. He has also appeared in three postseason contests and registered three carries for 6 yards, 2.0 average. In 2023, Taylor appeared in 11 games and tallied 32 carries for 141 yards, 4.4 average, to go along with 11 receptions for 49 yards. Taylor also appeared in two postseason contests where he added three carries for 6 yards, 2.0 average. Cowboys could trade projected $102 million star if talks get ugly, insider. The Cowboys' offseason has been a major disappointment, as five starters have departed and few reinforcements have been brought in behind them. One reason for the lack of activity has been the series of postseason's disappointments the Cowboys have suffered in past years. But another has a lot more to do with the future, namely the impending contract extensions Dallas will need to hand out to three top stars Micah Parsons, C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott. And it remains entirely possible that the Cowboys look at the future and decide they can't keep all three. Each is looking not only for a big payoff, but for the biggest payoff among all NFL players at their position. That will mean more than $50 million per year for Prescott, more than $30 million per year for Lamb and more than $34 million for Parsons. If the Cowboys are forced to decide which of the three they can't keep, it could very well be Parsons, according to the Athletics' John Machoda. Now, to be sure, Machoda writes that he thinks the Cowboys will sign all three players back. Why be so careful in free agency if the plan is not to keep the stars in place? The only way things could get off the rails is if Parsons wants to get well ahead of the $34 million per year that fellow edge rusher Nick Boza got last year. Here's how Machoda put it, Parsons is the choice only because his asking price could get to a level where the Cowboys determine they might be better off going in another direction. San Francisco 49ers edge rusher Nick Boza currently tops the NFL as the highest paid defender at $34 million per season. Parsons is probably going to want to top that number. But by how much? If it's in that neighborhood, everything will probably work itself out. But what if it's significantly more than that? If contract talks get ugly, maybe they try to work out a trade. I don't see it getting to that level, but it can't be completely ruled out. Trading Parsons would be a considerable shock, but given the circumstances, assuming Prescott and Lamb are re signed, it is understandable. The Cowboys would want a hefty ransom in return and, even if they got a deal in place for Parsons, it is unlikely they could truly replace what he brings to the defense. Parsons deserves to get paid, for certain. But how much and whether it should be more than Boza is the big question. Spotrack projects his market value well below that of Boza, at $25.4 million per year, for a total of $102 million over four years. That is dwarfed by the five years and $170 million Boza is slated to get. Parsons is just 24 years old and has been very durable in his three seasons, which include two All-Pro selections and three Pro Bowl selections. Parsons has missed one game in three seasons and has had 13.0, 13.5 and 14.0 sacks in each of his years in Dallas. He had a pro football focus grade of 92.4 last year, which was second among all edge rushers, behind Cleveland's Miles Garrett. The Cowboys are not likely to let a talent like that walk away, even if they play hardball with him in negotiations. It's a possibility, but the best bet is still that Dallas keeps the trio of Lamb, Prescott and Parsons together. The SAN Francisco 49ers are interested in hiring Micah Parsons.
And you, fan, what do you think of the situation of Micah Parsons? Leave your opinion in the comments.